Hello everyone, I'd like to talk today a little bit about the uh, Rostock Delta printer. Um, it's a really nice, really nice design. It's about a year old now, so in uh, three printing terms it's quite mature. Uh, and there are various other um, variations uh, on the Rostock uh, theme now, um, uh, including the Kossel, which uh, uses more of the aluminium framework for its construction. Um, I decided to build uh, the original Rostock with just a, a number of uh, smaller changes because um, I, I really like the original design um, and, and I thought it would work uh, particularly well. So my changes uh, to this design uh, are really only, only quite small. I wanted a, a little bit of extra room underneath the machine to mount the electronics and the power supply. Um, so I made some little feet that uh, the rods sink into, give a little bit more strength and uh, raising the platform underneath uh, slightly higher so I could fit all the electronics on. Um, I've used the uh, aluminium framework uh, for some of the uh, structural elements but uh, not as the main, uh, main uh, uh, glide elements. They're still uh, rods uh, and belts and linear bearings. Uh, in fact that's probably the only thing that, uh, that's um, um, uh, a little bit unexpected. This was quite, it's quite a noisy printer, that's why I haven't got it running at the moment. I, I will run it in a minute. But uh, the linear bearings running on these rods causing a lot of vibration and, and uh, resonance uh, do cause um, quite a bit of noise, more than I had expected. So maybe changing to uh, bushings or uh, uh, some type of uh, uh, quieter um, uh, running method on there would be better. Uh, on that note, I did actually start off with um, not using belts, I started off using the uh, Spectra uh, fishing line. Uh, this is a really nice uh, um, system. It's used on the Tantalus printer and a few others, um, and actually on the uh, the Cossel, the, the next uh, next generation of this uh, Delta printer. Uh, but when I started, I only had very thin uh, line, and I wasn't very very impressed um, with the, the strength of it. So um, I decided to go back to belts. Uh, just to get the machine up and running, and I'll probably revisit that. Uh, now I've got some thicker spectra line, which is really, really tough. Um, so I'll probably vis revisit that at some point in the near future. Um, okay, some of the other modifications I've made uh, with the extruder. Uh, since it's a Bowden setup, I used a, a Greg's extruder and um, uh, made a few modifications with. Uh, I really like these little push fit pneumatic uh, fittings. Uh, so I made one of those on there, um, and the, uh, the four mil um, tube can actually push straight into that. Uh, it's really easy to clear and to set up, and it mounts on my uh, aluminium framework as well. Um, so that's really nice. Uh, I'm using 1.75 mil filament, not the sort of three mil that some people are using. Uh, the other changes I made were to uh, the hot end mount. I tried a few different hot end mounts um, from Thingiverse and other places. Um, didn't really get on that well. I don't like the uh, the way they were holding the, the uh, PTFE tubing in. Uh, it was slipping out, causing me all sorts of problems. So I ended up just remodifying this one and adding another uh, push fit pneumatic fitting on there as well. Um, for that end, um, I'm using a J head uh, hot end uh, 0.4 mil nozzle um, from hot, hotends.com uh, from Brian, and uh, this is a really nice uh, setup works very well, particularly with the, um, uh, with the Bowden setup on there. So I'm getting some, some really nice results from that. Uh, my, my, uh, the other choice you need to make is on the rods. Uh, a few people are using um, uh, sort of carbon fibre or fibreglass rods or even uh, hollow sort of aluminium tubes. Uh, I decided to go more sort of eco route and go for wooden dowels because <laughs> of what, what I had lying around. So you need to print off the, uh, the ends and the little universal joints. Uh, which, these joints are a little bit of a pain. You can print them with a 0.5mm nozzle, but they're very, very tiny. They're very small indeed. Um, so they, they require a, a decent setup printer to be able to get uh, a, good, a good little universal joint there. And they fit on the ends and on, on the rails up here. Um, and in between is the wooden dowels. I've just covered them in uh, um, some heat shrink to make them look, look nice. Um, I got, I've got uh, uh, Hall Effect sensors on the tops there, so it's a little bit easier to adjust because that is again a little bit of a tricky thing, just getting the adjustment set up. The whole carriage moves up to the top 
when you first start the printer up and then comes down to the bed uh, when you're printing. I've got a standard Mark II heat bed on here, um, a Perusa heat bed, uh, which uh, works, uh, works very well. Um, and that's probably about the main changes really. I've got polycarbonate top and uh, 12 mil thick uh, ply base. Um, I've got the electronics uh, sat in the front here. My original intention is to eventually get um, this mounted in a nice case so it can fit at the front here with a, with a knob on. But at the moment it's just, it's just loose uh, while, I, uh, while I just go through a few more tests on the machine itself. Um, so that's pretty much it. Um, uh, things I've printed, this is a, uh, a bud vase, a very large bud vase from um, Mark Durbin, uh, known as uh, Make-A-Lot on, uh, on Thingiverse. And uh, yeah, really nice uh, uh, model, very quick to print, it's hollow. Um, and another one um, uh, I've done sort of uh, uh, over the last uh, couple of weeks uh, is by uh, Asher Namias. Um, these, this is a, a lava vase that uh, I think it's probably about uh, twice the size uh, of the original design. It takes ages to slice. It's a real complicated high resolution design, but um, comes out really nice on the printer. Again, another one by Asher is the um, uh, wonderful lily vase, which is a beautiful, beautiful design and uh, looks really good. That's actually got about, it's probably about 5 or 10% infill on there. So it took slightly longer to print. Um, but again, it's quite nice. They're quite small compared to what you can actually print. And um, the other one uh, I've done uh, a few of uh, that, that really come out quite well are the uh, tiki vases by uh, Perry Angel. Uh, and that's, these are really nice. So I'm uh, very impressed with how well these come out. And they're very, very quick to print. So there's only two, two outlines, uh, uh, two perimeters on there. So they're working really well. So all in all, I'm really happy with the, uh, the Rostock printer. Um, there'll be uh, a lot more information on my blog. Um, so go there if you, uh, if you want to take a look at how I've made it uh, and built this one up. And uh, I'm sure it won't be the only one uh, I built. And uh, maybe, maybe I'll, I'll uh, have a look at the, uh, the new design, the Costal design, at some point uh, uh, too. So thanks for, uh, for watching. hope you look at the blog and I hope you like the uh, printer. Till next time. Bye-bye.